for them to go out and proclaim the gospel, right? I mean, he said, don't take food or money or a sack, and you, you can't stay in different people's houses, and you have to go two by two. I mean, the rules are pretty long. Imagine if the apostles approached this as, as complaining about the rules that they a little conversation in the background between Andrew and Peter, and Andrew saying, can you believe all these rules? This is crazy. He actually expects us to go out and proclaim the gospel, and we can't take food? What are we supposed to eat? We can't take money with us? We can't take a sack? Not a second tunic? I mean, this is crazy. These rules are ridiculous. Who could be expected to follow all these rules? They didn't do that. The apostles didn't complain about all these requirements that the Lord set out for them before they went forth on their missionary journey. We could ask the question, well, why? That's a lot of rules. Why weren't they discontent with all this stuff that they had to do, which was really difficult? Going out with nothing? That would be hard. They didn't complain. The reason that the apostles didn't complain, even though this was a momentous, enormous task before them, because they knew Jesus personally. Jesus was their friend, and they trusted him. They had seen his mighty works, and they believed in his word. And so when the Lord sent them out, even though it was difficult, in their heart they can say, but I trust Jesus. And I think Jesus will take care of everything. And these rules, even though they're difficult, these rules will add to God's glory and will manifest something wonderful. I think, my dear friends, that we should try and have that same attitude to the demand of the gospel and the teachings of Holy Church. Because the demands of the gospel and the teachings of the church, which are one and the same, are difficult. They are demanding. And it would be easy for us to complain and say how impossible they were. The only way that we can love the demand of the gospel is if first we love the person of Jesus Christ. Rules make no sense a moral code makes no sense unless we have first fallen in love with Jesus Christ. When relationship comes first, the rules are simply a response to love. I could talk till I'm blue in the face about morality to someone who doesn't know Jesus Christ. But for the person who knows Jesus Christ, it's almost unnecessary to talk about morality because of the fact that they know him and they follow the rules as a response to relationship. Love is preeminent. And then only after the experience of love does the church place upon us, really, the demand of the moral living. We are called to know the person of Jesus Christ. And as we reflect on the gospel today, you know, really, we, we should remember that these demands that were placed on these 12 apostles when they went out, this is for all of you. This is for every one of us. I'd like to reflect what Jesus expects of us with these rules. Take no food, no sack, no money in your belts. What does that mean for us today, living the gospel as evangelists in 2024 who are called to proclaim the gospel of Jesus? What does this mean for us? Well, I would like to suggest to you that, of course, this is the call to trust in God. We are so burdened and anxious about so many, many things. We worry about finances and health and the future and a whole cacophony of dissonant sounds that live in our hearts and our minds. This gospel tells us Stop worrying. And here's the reason. When Jesus said, don't take any money, don't take any food, don't take a sack, that wasn't a demand that was difficult. Jesus was actually offering them freedom. Think about this. Don't take money, don't take food, don't take extra stuff. 
that wasn't inhibiting. That was freeing. And here's why. Because Jesus says, you don't have to take money. You know why? Because you don't have to worry about it. What you need will be provided for you. You don't have to carry and count money in your belt to see if you've got enough for dinner tomorrow. Don't worry about finances. Live in the freedom that is the freedom of my disciples. That's the call for us. What Jesus is asking each one of you and me is to live freedom, to stop worrying about all those things that are constantly in our mind because God takes care of us and even takes care of us when things go south. You know, I remember in my former parish, I had a family, and they were very dedicated, about five kids. They, they lived a missionary spirit. They ran an apostolate uh, in Chicago to bring people back to the church. And while I was the pastor there, they lost everything. The husband lost his job for about two years. They lost everything they had. They had to sell their house, and later on they had to buy a little tiny house that was really not adequate for seven people. And they moved to another part of town that was not as desirable as where they used to live. And after this whole thing happened, I was talking to them, and they said to me, you know, Father, we are happier than we have ever been before because we have experienced the perfect providence of God. He took care of us in the midst of all of this mess and difficulty. They lost everything, but they found freedom. And I think for them, it was worth it. Wouldn't it be wonderful for us to live in that kind of freedom of life by trusting perfectly in the confidence of God? I think there are two clear ways that we can do this as Catholics. One, I encourage you to be generous, of course, in giving to the church because what we have received, everything that we have, we've received from God, we should give it back with generosity, without anxiety or fear. I also want to make an invitation to uh, young families here. One great way of living generosity, accept children from God. Do not stop up the font of life. Say yes to God in your marital relationship by accepting children from God. Every time I celebrate a baptism, I say to the family, you have the cutest baby, because all babies are cute, of course. This is the cutest baby of the world. Your baby is so cute, I hope you have seven or eight more. Wouldn't that be wonderful? And every time I say that, they go, oh, Father, no, we do not want, two's enough, they even say. And I have to admit, when I hear a Catholic family say that, it breaks my heart. For a Catholic family to say, we don't want more children. And my response to those people is, take no food, no sack, no money in your belt. So often families say, we can't afford more kids, or it causes us, it's too much work. A family who has that attitude is the family that complains against the providence of God. My dear friends, those of you who are of marrying, child-bearing ages. Simply enjoy the gift of your marriage. Live in freedom and allow God to bless your union by incarnating his love in the body of a new living human person. That's the freedom God wants to give you. Don't worry. Just accept with love what God offers you. Live according to God's plan. That's the first point, that Jesus says, don't take these things because he wants to give us freedom. The second thing is that Jesus says, but you should carry a walking stick and sandals. Why a walking stick and sandals? Those don't seem like that important. But if you think about it for just a moment, those are the two things you need to keep going, right? If you've got a walking stick and you've got good shoes, you can persevere. You can keep walking. Even if everything else goes south, you can keep on going on. You can keep walking. In this gospel passage, Jesus wants to teach all of us who are today's missionary apostles, he wants to teach us freedom by trusting in him completely and perseverance that by trusting him, we can continue 
to do our ministry and our vocation without fear. You know, if I were to sum up this whole gospel today, I'd have to sum it up by looking at the second reading of today's Mass. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has bestowed on us in Christ every spiritual blessing. We have been predestined to be sons and daughters of God. That's what St. Paul tells us in the letter to the Ephesians. Because my brothers and sisters, once you know who you really are, the gift that you have received, that you are the light of Christ in the world and that you are sons and daughters of God, the Father Almighty, freedom is your inheritance. And you will undoubtedly persevere in grace by the gift and love of Jesus Christ our Lord. And so my dear friends, as we gather together to celebrate our faith today, I invite you to say yes to Jesus, to trust in him that you may have perfect freedom and persevere in grace.